Hi, this is Graphically Alex coming at you with all things fat related. If that's something that interests you, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. Today, what we're going to do is cover a big reality check that Anna O'Brien got on a recent like yachting trip that she did. I want to go ahead and showcase this video mostly because I want to show the struggles of being super morbidly obese. I think that she does a decent job of conveying that in this video. I do wonder if the video is as helpful as she would have liked it to be because a lot of people that are really big that maybe are nervous about doing something like going on a trip like this, they may see the comments and see the hatred and vitriol and not be as motivated, which is unfortunate. But I think a lot of times one actual gripe I will say, a lot of times when very, very big people try to get out and do things, it upsets a lot of people in in society, I guess. I think because they see how much the person is struggling and it's disturbing. It can be a disturbing thing. And I just think that if we're going to address this issue on a cultural level, if we're going to be helping people to get out of super morbid obesity, we need to be a bit more gracious and patient with people and just understanding. I found that a lot of times in today's world, especially in like the fat acceptance Western world, people do not acknowledge the physical limitations of super morbidly obese people because it's an attempt to be positive. It's that sort of like toxic positivity about the issue. And Anna O'Brien, in my opinion, she, she suffers from this herself. Like she's trying to run a 5K or, you know, she's trying to do these things that are very clearly out of reach. I'm not saying that to be mean or nasty or anything. I'm just saying it to be realistic. You know, part of why I fight the issue of obesity on this channel is because I want myself and other people to break past these limitations. I don't want us to gaslight ourselves into thinking that these limitations don't exist because injuries can happen and humiliation and these kinds of things can happen if things are not considered. So with that in mind, the last thing I want to say before we start watching this is think about the fact that one of the biggest issues in fat acceptance right now is sizing of clothes and then watch this video. Because for a lot of you guys who have never been this big, you do not understand how physically debilitating it is to be this big and the things that, that you have to consider when you are this big. So let's go ahead and get started. I am in the bathroom and it is very small and I am nervous that I will not fit on the toilet. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like, it's it's literally... Yeah, this is tough. So I don't know if I ever struggled with not knowing if I could fit in a bathroom. Um, but there have been certain circumstances where, let's say, you go on a plane. I don't think I've ever used a plane bathroom. I honestly don't think I ever have. Um, and part of that is probably because I didn't want to know if I couldn't fit. Um, it, when you have these kinds of experiences, like when you try to do something and you can't fit or you break something, I think like a lot of very fat people, they have had these moments where they're trying to go on a roller coaster or something and you just cannot fit and you have to get up and actually get off the ride. There are these moments where it's like the music and your mind just stops playing. It's like musical chairs has occurred and everybody else is sitting down and you're standing up and you're out. And I think that because our society in the West is generally affluent and 
mostly accepting and all these different things, sometimes you can get in this mindset where you have this delusion that it is okay to be as big as you are. But regardless, reality strikes in a moment like this where she has to consider if she fits on the toilet, basically, if she is able to use this bathroom on the yacht. It's a very real thing. Potentially might be the most embarrassing situation I have to be in. So I'm going to try to pee right now. I'm going to pray to God I fit. The amount of anxiety over these types of situations, you know, I, I, the only thing that I can think of in recent memory that I can relate to when I was super morbidly obese is when I was flying Southwest and with Southwest, there are so many different layovers. It's insane. <laughs> but I flew Southwest in 2022. I was about 383 pounds, like around that range, maybe in the 370s at that time. And currently I'm in the 290s. So basically, I was sweating it every single time I had to board. Am I going to sit next to somebody that cannot stand the fact that they're sitting next to me? Am I going to have a confrontation? Am I going to have an issue? Am I not going to be able to fit in a seat or not be able to fit in a situation? You know, is there going to be a huge issue every time I get on this flight? And that's what this moment reminds me of, is this type of moment. These are experiences that I think can help a fat person understand the reality of their situation, which is why I often encourage people who don't know how to help people to lose weight or especially how to help people find the motivation. I always say to get them out of the house, get out in the world because you get a taste of the good things of life, but you see how it's limiting you. And that's very motivating. Because, again, sometimes you can be kind of delusional, especially if you're staying inside all the time. You don't realize how much it's limiting you until you're worried about fitting on a toilet. Okay? I will say my spatial awareness of my own body is really not great right now because my body's changed so much that, like, I just don't mentally know what size I am and where I'll fit. So I could totally fit. I could totally not fit. And so it's where things like this, when traveling, things get really like gut-wrenching when it's like, <laughs> I'm away from a dock. We don't have any rooms to go. I'm like, this is it. So uh, yeah, that's very scary to not have any other options or anything if it does, if it does go wrong. I will say she touches upon her having lost weight. I'm not going to get into the speculation about it. You guys can write all about it in the comments. I'd love to read it. But as far as my experience, I have lost weight. I've lost 90 pounds of fat, gained 12 pounds of muscle, okay, around that range. And so when I consider my body now, there are a lot of times where I don't it's not as much about worrying about if I fit in something. It's it's more so, can my health handle this situation? Can my health handle doing this? Can my health handle doing that? You know, for me, it's a little bit different in the sense of like, I don't know what my capacity is anymore. I don't know what output I can do. Um, like I'm currently doing my job and then I'm trying to do this job full time. So I'm doing both at the same time. And there is no way I could have done this a year ago. Absolutely not. I couldn't even have done this before March. I couldn't have done this. So I think finding your sea legs after losing weight, it is a challenging thing. It's especially with super morbid obesity because it's, it's such a huge struggle and for it to be over, you know, I'm just morbidly obese now. It's so weird that that huge issue is done. And so I can relate to not 
trusting your body or not trusting your new set of circumstances, wondering if the ball is going to drop. I have that experience a lot. And luckily, I keep being proven wrong or I keep being shown just how beneficial it has been to lose the weight, which is, you know, it just fuels my passion for this issue even more. So let's continue. And either peeing here or in, uh, I guess, peeing in the ocean. So what ended up happening is she was able to fit, which good for her. That's great. So she kind of was portraying it as a sort of like victorious moment, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with being positive. But that's kind of how she presented it. I don't think she understands, though, that for an average person, having to consider that is very disturbing or very alien or very like, I've never heard this in my life or I've never even thought about this in my life. And I don't know if she has the awareness of how it comes across to the general public. So that I will say is, you know, tough in terms of making content like this because she's kind of talking like everybody can relate to her experience of being as big as she is and that's not at all true. So this moment is one of the biggest moments in the video where a lot of people were very, very disturbed. I'm going to go ahead and try to make it bigger. Um just so we can see it better but we're gonna watch it we're gonna lean in i'm gonna try to have you guys just remain calm if this type of stuff really disturbs you just breathe okay or if this is kind of triggering or whatever i'm sorry but we're gonna talk about it okay so this is her she's going to try to go up the ladder and you'll see what this what happens <laughs> So notice there was a cut there as well. I didn't put that cut there. But we don't know how long it took for her to be able to do it, for one. And for two, that moment where she's not able to do it, where you're not able to do it, it can be incredibly anxiety-provoking. Okay, so those kinds of experiences, it is physical and it's also mental. Because when you are brushed against your actual physical limitations as a very fat person, it's, it, can be, it can feel very vulnerable, especially when other people are around. And it can be scary, even when people are not around, which we'll get into in the next clip. But in this type of situation, there are people around that could help her, but it just is very embarrassing. It's very humiliating. This is something that I could see somebody being incredibly red in the face, you know, thinking about this many hours and days and weeks, months, even years in some cases after something like this. So I would just say, please be gracious and patient. You know, patience really, really helps in these kinds of situations, which of course, all the comments are freaking out over it, which I, I can understand on the other side too, it can be disturbing to people. But she does get it. Yes! That's how we do it! I think what is interesting about that moment is that she sees it as empowering. Um, whereas the average person would see it as a huge limitation, kind of like a limitation exposed. And so all I can say to you guys who are watching is if you're having issues like this, you can do something about it. You can lose the weight. You don't have to live like that. You know, as far as I know, Anna is she is pursuing weight loss. I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of speculation on the internet. I don't suggest people not saying the numbers if they're going to say they're losing weight. I've, I will say that till my face gets blue. Okay. Till I'm blue in the face. 
if you're going to talk about your weight loss, then you have to talk about the numbers. You can't really do it, you know, you can't do it that way. Otherwise, there's too much speculation. You know, I've let you guys know. I'll let you guys know now. I've been more so plateaued since I started going back to the gym. So I keep it a buck. But I also post when I lose. Like, I'll post the screenshots of the numbers on the scale and show you guys when different you know, at five pound increments occur. Okay, so there's no speculation. If you guys don't see a five pound increment appearing on my community page, then you know that I'm not currently losing. That's all, you know? So in terms of this, like people don't really know how much she weighs. So they they talk a lot about it, which I can kind of understand that because I don't know, you know, I don't know. I don't know myself what's going on because she doesn't say the numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch this last one. This is the last clip I'm going to show. This is her. I believe she's on like a hike or something. And we're going to talk about her experience with this. So let's go. So I'm all by myself. Um, everyone, I don't know where the hell they are at this point. Uh, but just a lot of really small spaces that I'm having to get through and I'm feeling really overwhelmed um, because it's very uncomfortable. It's very anxiety provoking because you're, you're being faced with the reality of your situation. It's, she's really throwing herself into the fire, so to speak, with these types of experiences, which honestly, as somebody who used to be super morbidly obese, I can kind of admire it uh, because it is really hard to be faced with the reality of your situation in that way. Um, and I, I do think it's a part of healing. It's a part of understanding where you're coming from. But it's a very vulnerable, delicate thing. And so while I admire her putting it online, it, it does kind of worry me because there's so much hatred and stuff over a very vulnerable moment. Um, and I was not prepared for this and I feel like I'm glad I'm on my own because I wouldn't want to like experience this with people that I didn't know really, really well. So she's having a very bad time. To me, that means that she's having a horrifically bad time. Like, she's probably in a lot of pain. She's exhausted. She's out of breath. She's squeezing and squishing and all these different things. She's having a horrific experience. And she wants to just feel that that experience, which is fine for her. But she would want that to be private, which I can understand that. But... It is like stressful to be alone because it's like if I hurt myself or if I like can't get through, um, there's no one to tell. So yeah. this is why I always talk a lot against fat acceptance when they talk about feeling secure in your body. That doesn't exist within super morbid obesity. You cannot feel secure in your body. You can't. You know, is she struggling to get herself out of the water? It's like she can't trust that she can get herself up if she were to fall or if something were to happen. You know, I think it's really important to always consider safety. I don't necessarily like that she's doing that alone, but she clearly doesn't care about her safety as much because she does a lot of very risky behaviors. Like she runs and does a lot of stuff that a lot of people criticize her for, which honestly, I do agree. I would criticize her for doing this alone just because it can be dangerous. And so other than that, I can understand wanting to do it alone. But yeah, you're really being faced with those physical limitations. It can be very bubble bursting. I kind of keep taking these little nooks as like a fingers crossed I can crawl my way through it. And I've literally been crawling on my hands and knees, which is also not what I was prepared for today. And I'm just trying not to cry. Yeah, that's rough. So she's really in a lot of pain because I can tell you guys, like even the weight that I'm at now, I still, it hurts to be on my knees really, really, really bad. 
Um, so I can't even imagine. Like, I can be on my knees if I have to, but just for me, looking at those rocks and thinking about how my knees feel just even on the floor, it's it looks like an absolute nightmare. Even at the size that I'm at now, I can't even imagine when I was at my biggest. So I just... I don't know. I don't really know. Um, but I can understand why she's wanting to cry. I don't think this is just pure drama. I just don't... I'm not 100% certain of her motivations, but I think she wants to have that kind of... that kind of dark experience. Maybe she's trying to restore some trust in her body or something. I wish that she would have talked about why she's doing it. Because a lot of people don't understand that, myself included. I don't understand it. That's where I'm at right now, I'm trying not to cry. Um, I think as much as my body changes, there's still so many things that are hard and out of my reach. And I guess that's what keeps me pushing to get to where I want to be, is to be able to have better access to these things. But it always sucks when I'm unprepared for something that might be challenging or difficult or overwhelming. And it even is harder when I just don't feel like I have anybody who's on my team. I, I love these girls. They're super nice, but they don't know me and they don't know what I go through. So it's, it's kind of like really feels lonely. It really feels like going it alone. Yeah. So with that, I would say there is a lack of cultural awareness in the West because, like I said, there's kind of that, that fat acceptance logic. It has permeated society. And so a lot of people, even when I described on my channel um, a while back, I would describe how awful my health struggles were. You know, I would talk about how low I was in 2020 and the beginning of 2021 and people wouldn't believe me. You know, people wouldn't believe that I was really that, that bad off. And I don't know if it's because people don't want to accept how bad it is. Um, if people are disturbed by it and they're concerned, or if people just genuinely believe that being fat is not much of an issue, because I hear a lot of people talk about, well, it's just fine. If you want to be fat, if you want to be fat, then be fat. If you want to be fat, then be fat. And for me, it's like, I guess, sure. You know, I'm not trying to say we should have the government come and round up all the fat people and all that. I don't believe it's a government solution. I just think culturally we should at least gently nudge people to better their situation because it is really bad. It is really limiting. And you shouldn't stay like that. It's not acceptable. And that's what I talk a lot about on this channel is how unacceptable it is to be especially super morbidly obese because it is so debilitating and I want for you, Anna, I want for you to do this hike or to just be able to do this with a smile on your face, feeling light as a feather, having ease the entire time, laughing, breathing well and deeply and calmly, and just being able to experience this without all these barriers. And I want that for every single person who is super morbidly obese and especially somebody who doesn't want to be. So I'm rooting for all of us, you know, regardless. I know that we all have our flaws and our problems and I understand that she gets a lot of hate. I'm not here to defend her as a person. I'm mostly just talking about the fatness issue. But I will just say this vlog that I watched, it was kind of harrowing for me a little bit. I'm thankful just because it does show me how far I've come and how far I have yet to go. You know, I'm probably at a sort of halfway point in my journey. And I have been in this sort of long plateau period. And I'm interested to see when that will pass. But things still change all the time. And my weight distribution is always different. I feel like I'm losing all in my arms and legs and everything is just congealing into a big belly and I feel like I'm going to start looking like I'm pregnant soon. <laughs> or maybe I'm getting that pot belly action at some point. But um, with that, you guys, I'm going to go. Thank you guys so much.
<laughs> um, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave your comments below. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a good one. Bye.